I think that also defines the record, the fact that we wrote under pressure and wrote in that kind of collaboration, you know, where we were all in the same room. Not like taking things away, working on them, presenting a finished thing to one another. We were like having to go through the rough ideas in real time. It was the most extreme musical experience I've really ever had, honestly. During session two, we spent a lot of time after a full day of recording, then jamming all night on uh, some songs which were really weird, you know, really weird and loose. And so we spent, there were a lot of nights where we just turned the lights off, put some color, you know, there were some colored lights on the floor that we'd turn on. There's a gigantic disco ball that'd be spinning around in the dark room, just throwing lights everywhere. I could barely see the neck of my guitar, and we would just play. Everyone has a common goal in mind of like, giving as much of yourself and like bringing like the bringing the best that you can to the table and so it didn't feel like oh my god another like four in the morning like recording session it just felt like yeah this is what we want to be doing so this is what we're doing you know I think we were definitely pushing ourselves and pushing each other you know and I'm sure every band says that but I you know it's true with like making an album especially when you work closely with the entire band. It's very, you know, it's emotionally draining and also like super rewarding, you know, because we like, one thing that this proved is that like, we are able to really, really argue with one another and still focus on what we're doing, you know, which isn't easy to do. As a band, we're usually pretty thought out, maybe a little controlled, you know, we really think things over. So it's nice to have a little something a little more spontaneous going on on this album. We tried to improvise whenever possible. We tried to leave space in these insanely dense songs for reinterpretation or for non-specificity. And that's some, that was a new, kind of a new, new thing for us, for, especially, well, definitely for this lineup, like the idea that we could just jam for five minutes, record that, no overdubs except vocals, and then call it a song, uh, like Pale Sun. And that was really fun to work with Dave on that, too. Because what we would do is just be in the room, work on something, play it. He would record some. He would kind of start recording when he thought it was good enough to start recording, you know? We'd be like, you recording that, Dave? He's like, no. <laughs> Okay, we're not there yet. If we didn't have that mediator, maybe we wouldn't have finished, but I think it was nice to have somebody there to be like, just slightly push us, you know? He was one of the five, you know, voices giving opinions. And because sometimes we weren't really quite sure what we were doing, it was good to have that in there. And he was part of that really great, you know, debate aspect we had where we could talk over musical disagreements without anybody ever getting upset or flustered. Dave, I give so much credit to because he's just like this musical wizard of like patience <laughs> and knowledge. <laughs> I think making art in general is a process of dealing with self-doubt through Till, the, till you're finished, you know? So I think um, a lot of the times when we made decisions, it was just kind of like, yeah, like, it's hard to have perspective when you're working like that. Nobody wanted to raise their hand and say that this is getting weird uh, in a way that would stop us. So maybe the collective 
mentality that, you know, maybe the hesitance to raise, for anybody to raise their hand up and go, hey, shouldn't we just write on a, you know, normal, more normal song? Shouldn't we just make it, like, effective by the numbers? Uh, the fact that that never, that wasn't really happening. We would, I mean, we laughed a lot because it was just like, holy shit, did we just, are we going to do this? Is this going to be part of a song? Uh, you know, like lots, lots, almost you know, every, every song we wrote was kind of just like, well, I guess that's happening now. Um, and then it was just a matter of, you know, playing it in a way that was convincing or, or just like owning up to it. Yeah, like when, when we tracked Pale Sun, we just did a couple run-throughs of it. It was instrumentally, like the song at the time that we tracked it didn't have vocals. It wasn't intended to have vocals that, you know, we weren't like planning on it. Um, but Nick and Seb were in separate rooms, like Seb, tracked his drums down in the B studio at Tarbox uh, to get just kind of a bigger, like roomier, like drum sound. It was particularly fun and weird because there's, there's two live rooms at Tarbox and they're separated by a hallway. And so I was in one room with my blue Ludwig kit by myself and everybody else was in the other live room with their amps. So I couldn't see anybody. It was nighttime and the studio was totally dark. And we kind of didn't really even communicate through microphones. I just counted off and we started playing. We didn't think that was, we thought that was gonna be an instrumental until Gina and I worked our asses off to figure out how to put vocals on it. Cause that, you know, my thinking was, this is so cool. It would be even cooler if, if it was possible that you could find the vocal line and trajectory through it. And somehow we did, you know? Uh, I think Gina had that like middle section and she kind of had this real like kind of soft, weird, sort of woozy uh, vocal line. I not, you know, I'm thinking back about it now. I think, I don't know that it was even intentionally supposed to be as loose and woozy as it feels. I think when she and I were working uh, on the vocals in my basement, it, like her first take, I was like, oh, like she, she was, she was, maybe wasn't like, maybe it was like she wasn't confident or it was just like that first time trying out an idea and so it was kind of like, it felt like it was a little shaky and I was, and I just heard it and I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like, let's, let's do that. That'll be the way that that part goes. Pale Sun, edibles. <laughs> mm. Also, uh, live at Pompeii. Pale Sun, the gentlest, most sultry outro song on any Baroness record ever. Psych. It's very dark and it's very intense. And I don't think we've ever made as unpleasant an ending a record as this, but it's perfect. That song couldn't have been more weird and obnoxious. And I think it's the only freeform solo I've ever played on the record. It just happens to sound like crystal ice daggers having a laser battle with the crystal ice people in a crystal ice room covered in crystals and ice and laser guns. And then I scream a lot, I scream a lot in that one. I was particularly, I don't know what I was into that day. I don't know what Gene and I were into that day, but it, that song happened and boy did it happen. Pelson, I just think of like John and I trying to fit vocals to that and just trying to like make, make sense of it all. We did a good job, it's a really normal song. Pale Sun, yeah, that was just, that's what Baroness sounds like when we jam. We were just, that was the end of a long day, and Dave was just like, you guys are done working on this, go play this jam. You know, we liked that groove, we didn't know what it should be, but we just went and played it. And then all the music you hear is what we did in that moment, you know, which I think, which that alone could not be further from what we did on Purple. 
Like, let's do one take of a jam and then make a song out of it. That is like, that is our response to what we had, what we did on the record before, you know, more so than anything else, I think. So, cool. Sun went down, got cold. 